The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. On today's show, when's the last time you went away on a getaway with God? Author Leticia Souk explains why every woman should literally schedule a spiritual retreat. And there's a lot of political chatter about moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, but is it really going to happen this time? Brian Bush has the latest, and that's a question that I am very interested mm -hmm. in getting Brian's uh, input on because uh, it's, I think it's been since Reagan, the president, incoming president, has promised to move the, uh, the, the, uh, Embassy up to up to Jerusalem, whether it's Republican or Democrat. I'm not sure if President Obama did that, uh, but after getting into office, it That's just right. doesn't happen. Then politics gets in the way, yeah, right? It just and proves so too difficult. So we don't we don't hear that. So this is not uncommon that we're hearing mm -hmm. this chatter about moving it to Tel Aviv. But has President Donald Trump said or signaled that he would like to have it moved? That's yeah. the question. Yeah. Well, he's definitely said that he would like it moved. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it happens or not, so far he's been. Uh, pretty adamant about fulfilling his promises through mm -hmm. executive order. We'll see if that continues with this particular issue. I know that Prime Minister Netanyahu is supposed to make a visit to the United States to see the president uh, mm -hmm. fairly soon. Yep. Uh, I know it did come up in the uh, the first press briefing with uh, Spicer uh, several times, two or three times reporters had asked about this particular topic, so we'll get Brian's input. And then uh, we have... Uh, the Women's March that just took place last weekend and the March for Life is taking place in Washington, D.C. this coming weekend. It'll be interesting to see uh, how the media uh, covers or, or doesn't cover uh, this women's event that's been going on for many years and drawing upwards of half a million uh, women to D.C. each and every year. Well, if we base our predicament on past coverage, no, we mm -hmm. won't see very much of it. We don't hear a lot about uh, this march taking place, even though hundreds of thousands of women show up for this event um, to take a stand for life. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think so. Maybe because now that uh, we have a president who supports life, mm -hmm. that we may see some type of coverage. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. I know your girls have been there before, haven't uh, they? A lot of my family members have been there, and tomorrow we'll have a guest on the show, Jeanette right. Burdell, uh, to talk about that kind of issue and, and the pro-life movement and the progress that they hope to make under President Trump. Yep, and uh, prayerfully, it's going to be some great, great progress. And uh, hey, real quickly, found this on uh, on YouTube, and so <laughs> just got a question. If you take a look at this, go ahead and roll this tape here, Jason. It's actually footage of uh, Chuck Freebie's kids getting back. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Whoa, where was this? This is in Georgia, not wow. the state. <laughs> not the, not the state, state but the you? nation, and the Georgian Orthodox Church. This is a, the way that the... Kids are baptized in the uh, Georgian Orthodox <laughs> Church. I can tell you right now. That's I your was... first thrill ride right there, baby. <laughs> I was not baptized like that. I mean, I remember, you know, going, undergoing, yes. you know, taking the dip and coming back up, but the pastor would hold on to you so you wouldn't, you know, <laughs> you couldn't let go. But right. wow. Yes, did... wow. And those children, those parents had, were, were lined, lined up. up. Yeah, they were lined up. Kids. Now, I've, I've been to a, uh, a Greek Orthodox baptism once. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, invited me, and uh, that was quite quite the spectacle itself as well. You know, not quite as as entertaining or as energetic wow. as the Georgian <laughs> Orthodox, but uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting to see that. And uh, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Have you? No, I can't <laughs> say that. Yeah. All right. Listen, we want you to join the conversation today, and and uh, let us know what you think. Any prayer requests you have? Anything you've got to say about anything we're talking about? We'd love your input. You can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter. Live at Lassie.com is the email address that gets you right to our set. World news coming up next. On this Wednesday, January 25th, 2017, here's what's happening in your world. At least six people were killed, four others injured from gunmen from Somalia's Al-Shabaab group who fought their way into a hotel in the Somali capital. Dozens of people, including legislators, are thought to be staying at Mogadishu's Daya Hotel. Heavy gunfire can still be heard inside. The group, Al-Qaeda's East African affiliate, is fighting to impose a strict version of Islam in that Horn of Africa nation. 
Turkey's Prime Minister Benali Yildirim is praising the Syrian peace deal struck between Russia, Turkey and Iran in Astana Tuesday. He describes it as a serious diplomatic success that could pave the way for a political solution to the six-year conflict. Russia, Turkey and Iran struck a deal on a three-way mechanism to consolidate the country's nearly month-old ceasefire. Yildirim says a political solution to the Syrian conflict should encompass a new Syrian administration, maintain Syria's territorial integrity, and represent all factions. President Donald Trump has signed orders to advance construction of the Keystone and Dakota Access oil pipelines. Former President Obama killed the proposed Keystone pipeline in late 2015, declaring it would have undercut U.S. efforts to clinch a global climate change deal that was a centerpiece of his environmental legacy. The pipeline would run from Canada to U.S. refineries in the Gulf Coast. The U.S. government needs to approve the pipeline because it crosses the border. Meanwhile, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau launched an impassioned defense for balancing the environment and economy at a raucous town hall in the heart of oil country. The Prime Minister has been accused of making inconsistent statements depending on whether he was in eastern or western Canada. And he was asked whether he was confused or just a liar. We need to get off of fossil fuels as uh, a dependency we have. We need to move beyond fossil fuels. But that, even, even Stephen Harper recognized we have to get off fossil fuels eventually. We have to do that. Uh, Trudeau also spoke in favor of free trade, listing areas of the world where Canada is trying to make trade deals. And rescue crews have recovered several more bodies from the rubble of an Italian hotel crushed by an avalanche, bringing the death toll there to 23. The rescue efforts also led to another tragedy. An emergency helicopter slammed into a mountainside Tuesday. Two pilots, three crew members, and a skier were killed. Avalanche recovery crews report six people unaccounted for under the tons of snow and rubble and the search operations continue. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest on the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem. But up next, author Letitia Sook explains why every woman should literally schedule a spiritual retreat. We're right back with more Harvest after this. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today, you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18. Or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. We all need a little downtime, but have you ever taken a spiritual retreat? Letitia Sook is a certified life coach who says every woman needs to get away with God. But does that mean we literally book a trip to be with him? <laughs> well, we're going to find out in just a moment. Welcome to the Harvest Show, Letitia. Thank you. Okay, so what does that mean? What is it? does it mean to take a spiritual retreat? I mean, I... I thought I was taking a spiritual retreat. Actually, every time I would have devotion or something like that, and I would focus on God. But you're saying there's more to it. There is more to it. Okay. Many women, and men too, the book is targeted to women, but all the principles apply to men as well. We are desperate for more time alone with God. And Often we think, oh, if I can get up just a little bit earlier, maybe I can squeeze something else in. But That's exactly yes. right. That's and, exactly and how long what does I that say. work, right? <laughs> so. so you're saying that it takes more, and what are we to do? What are you hoping women will accomplish once they book this spiritual retreat? If you have ever taken a getaway with, with a, a, a spouse or mm -hmm. a family member or a girlfriend or anything like that, you are familiar with the takeaways from, from doing that kind of thing. So getting away with God is that opportunity to mm -hmm. really plug in for 
a deeper rest. I use the analogy of plugging in like you plug in your cell phone every night. Our mm -hmm. soul needs a long recharge. Mm -hmm. And, and what, uh, what do you recommend or what options are there? Are you talking about like seven day, five day, three day, one day retreat? Half day. Half day. <laughs> <laughs> Work with what you've got. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a different time availability that they can take. And especially if you're first starting out with, a, oh, I think I want to try this, but I can't do a whole day. Well, then well, what can you do? Yeah. So. Yeah. And the importance is, though, to, to, to actually book it. To, to make it, it on, put it on your calendar. Yes, and to actually get away, to leave yeah. your own home oh. for someplace else. So is there a way to prepare for it? Like should we do, should we fast and pray before it, before the retreat? I mean, how do we prepare for this retreat that we're going to have with God? Well, you could. You mm -hmm. could fast. You can certainly pray and I think approaching it like you would other aspects of your spiritual life. What does it take for you to have that connection with God. And for some people, it does involve fasting. I don't think I've ever fasted on a personal retreat, although many have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It isn't asking him. I, I feel like you're responding to an invitation from God to come away. And so he will have a plan for you of how to do that, and he will show you. And Leticia, in your life and in the lives of others that, that you, uh, you talk with and meet, uh, <clears throat> What has the impact of these kinds of retreats been? Mm -hmm. What has it meant to you? How have you seen it really uh, influence the lives of others? You come away from spending that intense, that intimate time with God for however long you can get away. And usually the results are on the line of redefining a life purpose, mm -hmm. a real clarity of vision. I feel when I come away that all those knots of our unsolved things in our life we carry around get, get loosened at least and, mm -hmm. and sometimes untied and certainly to feel that overwhelming presence of God's love. You've actually written a book called Getaway with God, Every Woman's Guide to Personal Retreat. So you've kind of taken the guesswork out for us women, mm -hmm. you know, when we want to go on the spiritual retreat, how to do it, when to do mm -hmm. it. What are some of the themes that you cover? I cover just about anything that someone, like, how do you use the time? I have mm -hmm. time templates in there for the woman that wants a lot of structure. Okay, do this first, and then do this, and then do this. I have packing lists. I have scriptures. I have prayers. I have optional exercises, details on how to find a place to go for a retreat. So I tried to think of any kind of question that might be under the FAQ section mm -hmm. and get it in the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, imagine some might say, well, I'm going to get there, and, and, and day one, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> now, now what? <laughs> now what do we do? Well, it's good to think through that a little bit before you get there, but I think sometimes you just kind of land, and that's all you could do is just get there. Mm -hmm. And part of it is that leap of faith to trust that God is going to meet you there. Mm -hmm. If he invited you, he's going to meet you there, and he's going to show you what to do next. And mm -hmm. You know, that's that's so critical, I think. That's the key to it all, the expectation that God will meet us mm -hmm. where we, you know, during our spiritual retreat. What have you found, I mean, what is God saying? What does he typically say to us during a retreat? And I know we're all individuals, but is there a common theme? I love you just the way you are. Okay. That mm -hmm. you don't have to, you don't have to go through any kind of, you know, God may take us through a transformation, but we don't have to, you know, do the transformation ourselves first so that we can come to God. And that is usually the takeaway for everyone. Oh, my gosh, I'm so loved by God that I'm, I'm of so, so much value to him. Uh, in your, in your um, practice of these retreats and, and getting others to, to do likewise, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the common concerns that maybe you've seen arise uh, from men, from women, when it comes to, you know, mm -hmm taking this step? I think a common concern is one that I certainly had initially is, oh my gosh, am I <clears throat> spiritual enough to do this? Mm -hmm. am, I, am I, how am I going to use my time? Do I have to pray the whole time? Do I need to fast? Do I need to have silence? And all of those kind of questions, because it is a bit of an unknown that mm -hmm. oh, most of us you know, aren't familiar with this until we actually do it. So those are some of the concerns, the fear of the unknown, the fear of filling the time. When I read this, the first thing I thought mm -hmm. of, you know, when I was raising my daughter, I, I was a single mom. Mm -hmm. I've never been married. So, mm -hmm. you know, my daughter had to go everywhere with me. Mm -hmm. So what about those mothers who have no other option but to take mm -hmm. their kids with them? Mm -hmm. 
then I would hopefully it would work out that there could be a family member or another friend, especially if you have a girlfriend that, oh, I'd like to do that too. Okay, I'll take your kids so you can go and you take my kids so I can go. Good and, point. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we work those things out for other areas of our life. So we can, and moms, we tend to just put off whatever put off. benefits mm -hmm. us. You know, we put other things first. You also talk about fears. You say that people mm -hmm. have fears. What would you say is the number one fear in planning a spiritual retreat? What if I go to all this trouble and nothing happens? Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, at least you've gotten a day away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good a couple of days away. So I, I encourage women to focus on the experience, not yeah. necessarily the results. You know, well, there will, there will be results, but yeah. you can't keep, like, looking all the time. Okay, what are the results? What's going on? What's happening? But mm -hmm. to enter into it. The experience it, itself. The experience itself. Is the itself. fulfilling and the mm -hmm. important and impactful yes. part. Yes. And there will be takeaway, but it's very hard to experience and process at the yeah. same time. So, so basic kind of guidelines is, you said get out of your house, mm -hmm. right? Uh, be alone. Mm -hmm. So this is not necessarily a group activity, uh, what you're advocating. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd imagine uh, you, there are others like, you know, make sure your cell phone is off and you don't bring a, no internet connection or, or things like that. Mm -hmm. how, how important are some of the, the basics? Well, I do encourage women to go away alone, but not everyone is ready to do that or wants to do that. Mm -hmm. So. You can do a tandem personal retreat, and I actually lead small groups of about 10 women at a time. I have one coming up this weekend to mm. go to a local retreat center where they are mostly on their own, but I touch base with them now and then to, in your next few hours, you might want to consider doing this. So it gets them in the door, and whatever gets you in the door. Okay, so returning home, what advice do you have for that? To commit that all to Jesus before you leave. Okay, I'm going back home. And you know, you, you may walk into t all kinds of chaos when you go back home. <laughs> you know? But to trust that he knows that that chaos is waiting for you and he will prepare you to, to get back into it. And, and it's, it's so much comes back to just trusting him for the whole picture. You know, during my quiet time this morning, I read the book of Mark where Jesus, where we see where the word of God is being spread like mm -hmm. on stony ground and, and on and in good ground, mm -hmm. and how the seed uh, will take form, or the enemy will come mm -hmm. and choke the seed. Mm -hmm. I mean, should we be aware of that, that, mm -hmm. you know, the enemy mm -hmm. may come and try to take what we experience during this spiritual retreat? How do you prepare women to protect themselves? To, to recognize that it's likely going to happen. Okay. That there will be some kind of spiritual counterattack to you taking this time away and even just being mm -hmm. aware of it and looking for it so that you're ready, that you can be ready to, as the word says, resist the enemy and he mm -hmm. will flee. Well, before we let you go on your next spiritual retreat, mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the takeaway of Getaway with God, the Every Woman's Guide to Personal Retreat? That it, this is an opportunity to enter into that presence of God that is not like anything else you've experienced before. Mm -hmm. and wonderful things await you in that time. I can't promise you exactly what they'll be for you, but I can assure you that when we get along with God, things happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to book mine very soon <laughs> to connect Good. with Letitia. Go to LetitiaSook.com or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to her new project. It's called Get Away With God. Still to come, Brian Bush with the latest news making headlines in the Middle East. Heal the sick, mend broken relationships, reach the lost with the love of Christ. Do all of that and more when you support LaCie Broadcasting Prayer Line. Prayer Line is a channel of God's love, reaching more than 10,000 people every month. Your gift today will help keep Prayer Line available for free 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Go to your phones right now and call 1 800 365 3732. Give now and keep Prayer Line going strong. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Here at Prayer Line, we devote ourselves to prayer. 24 hours a day, we are on watch and thankful for every call that we receive. We see each caller not only as a prayer partner, 
but another opportunity to see God move and lives changed. If you have a need, please call us at 1-800-365-3732. Time to check in with our LaCie correspondent, Brian Bush, who joins us from Jerusalem. Brian, good to have this time together because I want to hear from you there on the ground on two subjects, the moving of the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and the building of settlements. Let's start with the embassy. What is the significance of such a move? Well, Chuck, the big deal is, is that it would be a blatant violation of international law and break with the norm over the last 70 years. And that is, is that Jerusalem is uh, partly occupied territory. Um, Further, it sends the message that Jerusalem is Israel's capital, which again is a yet to be recognized international issue. Chuck? Now, I know the Israelis want to see this happen. I'm sure the Palestinians don't. But can they stop such a move? Well, they said today that they have received assurances uh, that the move is not high on the Trump agenda. Uh, It's not on their to-do list for next week, in other words. But either way, yes, uh, Mr. Trump could do it, uh, and they can't stop it. But it would be the end of the peace process, the throwing away of America's key leveraging point in those negotiations and the rejection of the Arab Peace Initiative, which is the best win-win for all parties concerned moving forward in the Middle East in order to solve this long-running conflict. Chuck? Let's move now to settlements. Israel's prime minister made an announcement yesterday. What are people's reactions? Well, the settler community is ecstatic, but at the same time, they're complaining that his announcement didn't provide enough. Yesterday, Mr. Netanyahu announced the additional 2,500 Jewish homes to be built in the West Bank, and there were earlier announcements to lesser numbers, and I'm sure that there will be more to come. Uh, By enlarging settlement activity around particularly Arab East Jerusalem, Israel is seeking to change the facts on the ground and make it impossible for the Palestinians to claim Jerusalem as their capital. Um, Now, the Palestinians condemned the move by Mr. Netanyahu, as did the U.S., but a spokesman for President Trump said that the issue of construction will be discussed with Israel's prime minister next month in their meeting at the White House. Chuck? You know, that maybe this seems like a silly question, Brian, but has Israel run out of room to build housing for citizens within the state? Is that why they're so adamant to build in the West Bank? Well, no, there's plenty of room in the state to build, but the reason Israel expands into the Palestinian areas is in order to quantify those places as their own. Um, This is contrary to the Geneva Convention as it amounts to the transfer of population into occupied territory. Um, Originally, settlements were a security-minded strategy with people willing to move into Palestinian areas in order to receive subsidized housing, lower tax rates, and other perks. Um, But Israel is becoming more and more driven as a state by religiously-minded politicians who see it as a Jew's divine right to live in the West Bank and ultimately have that area become only Jewish in its makeup. Chuck? All right, thanks for the explanation, Brian. And a reminder, Brian gives us exclusive content from Israel, only available on the Harvest Show Facebook page, so make sure you like us on Facebook. We have praise reports today. Stephan and Valerie will go over them when we come back. Got Facebook? Follow the Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. And one of the ways you can connect person to person with us here at Lassie Broadcasting is to connect with Lassie's prayer line. Phone number is 1-800-365-3732. If you're listening outside the United States, you can dial directly into prayer line by calling plus one. 
574-291-1010 and then prayer at lacy.com is the email address for our prayer line center. A lot of folks do call in and write mm -hmm. in uh, and email in for prayer, but then uh, we love to get the pr praise reports back That's as right. well showing what the Lord has done, and that's what we've got today. That's right. Keyshawn from Canada says, I had been having a hard time making ends meet and found myself needing a job. Make a long story short, I have been offered two jobs, mm. and I thought about which one to take, so I, I have accepted both of the jobs. So good for you. Praise God. Carol from Indiana, my brother went to the hospital with a sinus infection and discovered that it had spread to his brain. I called prayer line to get help, um, and God came through. My brother started moving and he began trying to talk. It truly is a miracle. Mm. And then Rita from New York says, thanks prayer line for your support through your many prayers. When I got diagnosed with cancer, I called you all. You stuck it out with me and now I am cancer free. Mm. God is good and worthy to be praised. We get these praise reports, Stefan, and sometimes I think um, we're excited and we're surprised that God answers prayer in a very positive way and it goes in our favor, but God is a loving God and he will respond to us. So if you need prayer, give us a call and thank you so much for joining us here on Harvest. We'll see you again tomorrow. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the C Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the C Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. Today is your day. This is your moment. Life is calling. It's time to get back that extra spark that you've been missing, and it's simple with Mineral Concentrate, an all-natural trace mineral product designed to promote energy and focus without sugar nor caffeine. Call 1-800-965-2345 or log on to mhclife.com. Today is your day. It's time for life. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.